Hi there, this is Unmesh. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great time and making it an awesome day. So today I'm going to show you how to select and mask transparent or in other words, translucent objects in Photoshop like this veil or have a look like these dragonfly wings. So I got to be honest with you. Here's the thing. It's just not possible to be able to mask these things and change the background when the background is busy because there's no way Photoshop could tell the difference between the net and the leaf in the background, right? If it has a lot of details, if it's too busy, if it has a sun, the grass, the mountains, it's just not possible and there's no way Photoshop could do it as of now, all right? Have a look at this. If the background has a distinctive color, then it might be possible. Have a look, for example, here we have the green background. So we can use that information that the background is green. Okay, so we tell Photoshop, select everything that is green and remove that. In that case, it's possible to do it through that way, but there's a little trick to it. And we're gonna talk about it. So just keep in mind, the background needs to be seamless or distinctive. It doesn't have to be busy because if it is, it's just not possible to select these things. Okay, so how do we do it? First of all, let's just unlock the background layer and we will do it in one layer, that's okay. Now, if you want, you can put something in the background and if you just, let's just put, say, a solid color adjustment layer and choose black color, hit okay and I'm gonna put it under this thing. We're gonna select the layer and then select any selection tool and then we will enter select and mask. So I'm going to choose the rectangular marquee tool and click on select and mask. Now inside of select and mask, you can choose the view to on black or on white. I'm going to choose on black. Now what happens in on black is that whatever is selected that shows up, anything else which is not selected that is completely black if the opacity is 100. So Right now, nothing is selected. Let's decrease the opacity. And if you select something, for example, if you paint over her, just like that, I'm sorry about the sound. All right, if you paint over her, if you select that, have a look. If the opacity is zero, it will show you everything irrespective of whatever is selected. If the opacity is 100, it will show you only the areas which are selected. I'm gonna clear the selection by clicking here, clear selection, and let's decrease the opacity to something like this. All right, cool. Now let's click on select subject to be able to quickly, just let's see what Photoshop does. It automatically tries to select the subject and sometimes it does a pretty good job of doing that. Wow, it really did a nice job. Now let's zoom in and let's fix it. Well, it's pretty good here and it needs a little bit of fixing there. So with the quick selection tool, I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller, just like this. And you can take all the time in the world to fix all of that stuff. You can use the brush to fix it. You can take your time in the world. Now, here's what I wanted you to know. Let's zoom out a little bit. There's this tool called the Refine Edge Brush Tool, all right? And wherever there is hair or fuzziness, you can just paint over those areas with the Refine Edge tool, and it kind of tries to solve those areas. However, apart from that, have a look here. You can paint the whole thing that you think is translucent, and have a look. It goes transparent, I mean translucent, and it's able to select the whale. Now when you release it, I want you to have a look at this. Isn't that amazing? Now you can change the background to whatever you like. You can do the same right here. Pretty good. It's processing. It looks pretty good. Now, once you're ready with this, once you have done all those, selected all those intricacies, I'm not gonna do it. So hit OK. And have a look at this. You can change the color to whatever you like. Just focus on the veil. Just double click on the solid color adjustment layer. See, isn't that awesome? Also, if you want to make sure that, just let's hit OK. If you want to make sure that it's a mask, all right, you need to make sure, let's go back to the select and mask thing. You need to make sure that the output settings are selected to layer mask, which is the default. If you see something else, 
make sure it is layer mask. I'm just going to hit cancel in case your layers look different. Now let's move to example number two. And in this example, as you can see, the background is green. So we can say to Photoshop, hey, Photoshop, remove everything, which is green. But there will be a problem. And the problem would be you will see some fringes on the wings because as you can see the green has also been inside on the wings of this thing so how do we do it first of all let's make a copy of the background layer press ctrl or command j and this is just for safety just to look at the before and after and all that stuff you don't have to do it if you don't want to but i'm gonna do that now we will go to select and then color range all right now inside of color range you might not see this you might see all of it black or all of it white or something strange like that. So change the selection preview to none first. Then what you would do with the help of the eyedropper tool, okay, click on the green around the dragonfly. Okay. All right. Now you would click on the plus eyedropper tool, click on the green around it on other areas as well. This is just adding the color. All right, now you can change the selection preview to grayscale. White are the areas which are selected. Black are the areas which are not selected. So as you can see, the veins are not clearly visible. So we will decrease the fuzziness and it looks real bad. I don't like it. So what do we do? Well, we will again go back to the eyedropper tool and try clicking on just one area. That's better than before. And now let's try increasing the fuzziness. It's it's better. I guess it's better. I'll just click on some other area. Let's see what happens. The veins should be visible. Maybe we'll just add some areas around here. All right, pretty cool. I mean, you should see the veins. Okay. It's better than before. I like it. Let's zoom out a little and let's have a look. The veins are they're, well f fairly visible and I'm okay with that. Pretty good. Hit OK once you're satisfied with this. You'll have to find a middle ground. Now, once that is selected, you would invert the selection because we want to select the dragonfly and the veins. But right now, the green thing is selected. We want to select everything except the green and create the mask out of it. Press Control Shift I, Command Shift I to invert the selection. Or you could have simply gone to select and then inverse. Now, once the selection is inverted, you would click on the mask button. So at the bottom here, there's the mask button. There you go. Now you need to turn off the background lid to be able to see the transparency. And it's pretty transparent. What I would suggest you to do is to change the color to something like, let's choose solid color. Let's see white. Okay. Now there's green fringe to it. I know. And we have to get rid of it. So let's go back to the mask, click on the mask and you can hold the alt key or the option key and click on the mask to just make the mask visible. Now we have to make adjustments to it. We will select the brush. And if we just simply paint with black, it does hide it. But if you paint over the wings, it also hides the wings. So what I would suggest you to do is to change the blend mode to overlay. When you do that, it will only paint over the extremely dark areas or the areas which are closer to black. Okay, It won't paint on the completely white areas when black is selected as the foreground color. Again, inside of the mask, white shows and black hides. Let's go ahead and paint. And if you paint over the wings, it still show, shows parts of it, which is good. You can decrease the flow to 20% and be careful around the wings. You see, it's much better than using the normal. See, you can paint around it and the color just doesn't go inside of that branch. Isn't that cool? That is cool. I know. Let's paint here. Pretty good. Awesome. And we have got a really nice mask. Now for the size, you can change that back to normal after using it. Do not forget to do it. Change that back to normal because if you're using the brush for something else, it stays in overlay and it will freak you out. 
All right, so hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button. Now you have a pretty nice mask, but the problem is it's still got green in it. How do we get rid of it? Well, it's pretty easy. Well, you can desaturate that area or there are tons of things that you can do. But uh, what I would suggest is, well, we can do this. We can click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. All right. And we can decrease the saturation. But if we do, it will decrease the saturation in all of the layers which are beneath it. You want to clip it just to this layer. So click on this button to just limit it just to this layer. All right. What happens is, okay, let me show you what happens if we do not clip it. Let's click on the clipping button again. Let's change the color to something else. Let's say it was red. But we're selecting red. It's not red. Why? Because it's not clipped. So if I decrease the saturation, see, it's, it's making everything desaturated. I want to limit it to just the dragonfly. Click on the clipping mask button. See this arrow? This means that it's only affecting the dragonfly thing. And then when you decrease the saturation, see, it just affects that. Okay. So keep that in mind. We don't want red. Let's keep it white for now to see everything. Let's go back to hue saturation and then let's go to greens. Select greens and let's try decreasing the saturation. Does it take it away? No. Just increase the range from here. Okay, that does take it away, but also takes away other colors as well. So we will make the range a little narrower, slowly and gradually. We see the green, we'll increase it. All right, pretty good. That is pretty good. Now we took away the greens. It looks okay. Probably we'll take it even more, just like that. It looks pretty good. Now, let's close it. Let's turn it off, turn it on. We took care of the greens. Now on white background, it does look pretty okay. But if you choose something like dark red, or if you choose something like say, um, blue, something like that, you wouldn't want something like that. You would select something like this. But in case you select something like that, or let's say something like this, and you would change color to something like this color, right? Now, at this point, what you can do, what I can suggest you to do is, it looks great on bright yellow, but to be able to, to see it in colors like blue, hit OK, and you can change the blend mode of this layer to multiply. So from normal, you can change that to multiply. You can see the wings, but it also darkens the dragonfly. What to do now? Well, it's very simple you make a copy of this. So select both of this, all right, and make a copy of this. Press Control or Command J. Now, for this one, the top one, you would change that back to normal. Inside the mask, select the mask, take the brush, and you can hide the wing because if you turn it off, it does bring in the extra color on the dragonfly, but it also does bring something extra to the wing that you might not want. Or if you like this, you can keep it that way. That's one other way to do it. You make a copy, one is multiply, the other one on top of it is normal. And if you want, you can select the mask and hide, make sure the black color is selected, brush and hide the wings, just paint over the wings inside the mask, hide the wings on that. Okay. See the mask? You see, we are hiding it. You can increase the flow and you can totally hide it. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask back again to show that back up. Now that's totally upon you whether you want to hide it or not. But I wouldn't. What I would do, I would keep it. Keep it. All right, just like that. I would keep it that way. Now you can change the color to whatever you like and it will work. Isn't that pretty cool? But for colors like white, you wouldn't have to keep this. So that's pretty much how we would select translucent or things where there's a net or things which are a little bit faded and translucent you can select stuff like that all right i'm gonna hit cancel but keep that in mind one thing is important it's again impossible to select objects which are reflective so if you have a glass and it's reflecting everything in the current scenario in the current landscape if you put it into something else 
you will have to recreate the reflection. You would have to recreate everything, which gets really impossible to do. In those scenarios, if you are doing something with reflective objects, might as well consider using 3D to create it. All right, that's much more easier than to be able to just copying it, pasting it, and masking it, and recreating all those reflections. Using 3D is much more easier in those scenarios. Anyway, not sidetracking. Those are the two ways to do it. Number one way was using Select and Mask. And if you are using an older version of Photoshop, you might want to use Refine Edge to do selecting this net. Or if the background is of certain color, you can use Color Range. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, do not forget to subscribe. And not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick, or tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.